Shalom. In our parsha, uh, Aaron and Moshe dictate to Am Yisrael the laws of uh, the sacrifice of the Korban Pesach. And at the end of these uh, laws, we read, Hazal asks, why does it say Kain Asu? It already says Vayachu Vayasu. The phrase Kain Asu is redundant. So on this, uh, Hazal in the Mechotha say, Lamed Sha'af Moshe Aaron Asu Kain. And this is uh, to teach us or to emphasize that even even Moshe and Aaron brought the Korban Pesach. Why should we think that Moshe and Aaron didn't bring the Korban Pesach? Uh, the Torah Tmima understands this literally. He says there really was a thought that maybe Moshe and Aaron would not do it because Moshe and Aaron belonged to Shevet Levi. Shevet Levi were not enslaved. And therefore, perhaps they didn't have to bring the Korban Pesach. Uh, but I would prefer to suggest that perhaps what the uh, Mechot here is trying to say is not that they brought the Korban Pesach. That goes without saying. But Moshe and Asu Kain, they brought the Korban Pesach just like everybody else. In the same spirit, uh, not viewing themselves as the leaders, as the teachers, just like every Jew had to bring the Korban Pesach, the same way they did so. And this is an important lesson. Uh, even a teacher, a leader, a person of great prestige, a person of great stature, Torah stature. Nevertheless, when it comes to performing mitzvot, performing mitzvot, all Jews are basically the same. Uh, in Tamil Torah, there is hierarchy. There's a teacher, a mentor, and the Talmud owes his loyalty and his fealty to his teacher. There's a halacha of a kvod, a kvod tamit chacham. But nevertheless, when it comes to actually putting the mitzvot into practice, uh, here everyone is the same. Uh, there's a well-known gemara at the end of Masechet Menachot, where the uh, Mishnah here says that uh, the Torah tells us that when a person brings a sacrifice, it's reach nichoach Hashem. But this phrase is used by the Torah in uh, sacrifice of, a, of an animal, of a bird, and also of a lowly meal offering, which is brought by a poor person who can't afford to bring a full sacrifice. And this is to indicate that uh, the person who's bringing the lowly offering shouldn't feel inferior in, in any way. Uh, and the uh, Now, the uh, gap between the rich and the poor that the Mishnah there was talking about is someone just, is a gap in physical means and wealth. Uh, there's a wealthy person, there's a poor, 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 poor person who doesn't have money and can't afford to bring an expensive sacrifice. Uh, but there's another uh, source which extends this into not uh, uh, physical wealth, but in the area of spiritual wealth. Right, this is also a well-known Gemara, Masech Brachot. Margala b'fumayad Rabbanan di Avne, right, the Chachamim in the Yeshiva of Yavne, used to say, Ani birya v'chadayri birya. Right, I am a creature and my friend is also a creature. They're referring to the friend, in other words, people who don't learn in the Beit Midrash. Ani m'lachti ba'ir v'mlachto basadeh. Because my work is done in the town, in the Beit Midrash. And he does his work in the field. He's a farmer. He works all day. Perhaps you would say that I am on a higher level because I do a lot. And he, in the, in the terms of but he learns very little. Nevertheless, right, the person who does a lot and a little uh, echad, they're the same. They're on the same level. Uh, each one brings what he can, what he has, and he does what he can. Uh, the Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, the author of the Orachayim, 
one time said that why does the why does the why does say echad hamabev echad hamamit? To make the comparison, they could have said they could have used a uh, less extreme language. Right? They could have said kamo, or they could have used could have used the comparative letter kaf to say that this one is like that one. But they don't say it's, this one is like that one. They say it's echad. It's virtually the same. They're doing it together as one unit. Uh, and actually, Rav Soledechik, uh, when he discussed this Gemara that I just quoted, he, uh, he, he says that he believes that there is a specific prohibition on Ga'ava, on arrogance, for Tamidei Chachamim. Just as the Torah says that a king, uh, right? the, the king should not feel arrogance in respect to ordinary people, the same way Tamid Chacham, who also is a person of great stature, Chazal even say, uh, compare Tamid Chacham to a king. Man Malchi Rabbanan. Tamid Chachamim are like kings. Nevertheless, they have this special uh, mitzvah of being careful that they shouldn't become arrogant and think that they're on a higher level than ordinary people. So, uh, again, when we're talking about Nimu Torah, there, there is a hierarchy, but in the practice of Torah, uh, the, uh, once, once you uh, have taught the Torah, but you come to put it into practice, then you, you're listening to God, just like everybody else. Uh, uh, in the tradition of the Chabad Hasidim, they tell us that the Balatanya, when he wrote his major work, the Tanya, after he finished writing it, he sat down and he started to study it, to learn it. In other words, uh, at that moment, when he, fin when he finished writing it, at that moment, he saw himself as, he stopped being the teacher. Now he's a student like anybody else. He opened the book from page one and started to study it and see what, it could, uh, what he could learn from it. Uh, this is a challenge. It means that the, the Talmud Chacham has to distance in, himself from his own Torah. Uh, the Chazal teach us again that uh, a person who uh, immerses himself in Torah day and night, the Torah becomes his, Torah to. Again, this is true on the level of learning. But when it comes to performance, now everyone hears the word of God and everybody does what Hashem commands, we're all on the same level. In fact, uh, it's not uncommon that we find in the Gemara that when there's sometimes a safek and halacha, what to do, that sometimes we just uh, look at what people do and decide that that's, that's the halacha. Common people, not learned people. Right, Hill as a king. Uh, is, uh, it's told about him that once there was a, a certain dad in halacha, another having to do a game with Korp and Pesach, and they didn't know what to do. So he said, If they're not prophets, they're the descendants of prophets. Notice there's this kind of Ruach HaKodesh which rests even on uh, common people. And interestingly, uh, Hillel, and this is something which we find in other places in Chazal, used the term Yisrael to apply specifically to the ordinary people, to the masses. Right, this is opposed to what we find in the Torah. Sometimes the Torah says Bnei Yisrael and Ha'am. And there the Mepharshim try to say that uh, Bnei Yisrael refers to the elite and Ha'am refers to the common people. But here in Chazal, we see that using the term Yisrael as a term which uh, just describes uh, the ordinary people, um, the plebeians, we would call them. Uh, okay, so this is a message which is particularly important here at this point. Why? Because uh, this is really uh, the first time in our Pasha where Moshe and Aaron appear as teachers. And when they appear as teachers, that really is their appointment as leaders, as the Malbin points out. He's referring to Moshe and Aaron, Lachem. You're the people that are the leaders now. And you're going to teach Am Yisrael what to do. And that's why it was so critical that precisely at this point that, uh, that, that we learn that even though uh, there is hierarchy, and I mean, so we do believe in, believe in hierarchy, and there are different levels, there are Kohanim, there are Levim, there are Melachim, 
uh, we're not a, uh, a society that, that believes in total sameness of all the people, but nevertheless, there's still an undergirding uh, basement level, a foundation of equality and unity which, uh, from which everything else stems. So that's why it's uh, Torah found it necessary here to say that in Moshe Aaron came as to that all the people, even the leaders and the mentors, they all were unified and uh, approached the mitzvah on the, in the same way. Ki shechad Shabbat shalom. 